Hi, Mark Savage here, welcome to my channel. Props today. Not necessarily an adventure bike, but any big bike. And not necessarily a 400 Bergman, but any scooter. Today's chat, riding both of these. They are very different. Yes, they've got two wheels, and I'm not talking about the fact that this is the rear brake, and this is the front brake. No gears, no rear pedal. And this is the clutch, this is the gear lever, front brake, and rear brake. They are your obvious things different. I'm talking about the ride, people's perception of you, and how they ride on the road, and how you feel as well. When you're on a sport bike, a touring bike, or an adventure bike, you obviously sit more upright, you're closer. On sports bikes, you're over the tank. On cruisers, you're well away, you've got half the bike in front of you. I mean, that is still talking about big bikes. With a scooter, you're just sitting on it. Accelerator, twist and go, it's so, so easy, and rear brake and front brake. And you sit differently as well, much lower down. Generally a lot lighter as well. But I'm mainly talking about something that's down here, the wheels. On a big bike, you're talking 17 inch wheels. Some BMW front wheels, 20 odd inch, but general standardization, 17 inch. On a most mopeds, you can have it from 10 inch to 13 inch. On a big 650s, maybe 15 inch but generally that 14 inch wheel. That really does make a different ride on the road. And yes, you could look at this huge 195 by 17 compared to this little 150 by 13 on the back here. But they handle so, so differently. If you're coming off a scooter and you're going to a motorbike, you'll notice it instantly. The seating position is different. You feel more squat in other areas, if you know what I mean. And the bike seems a lot heavier and freer. That's only way I can describe it. Bigger wheels, you roll more, um, banking is more as well, and more control. If you come off a big bike onto a scooter, there's not the banking where you feel you've got the tank, you sit differently, further back with your armchair. You, all bikes you can get a little bit of backache. I found I get a little bit of this. I'm sitting closer to it than I want to. I want to push back a little bit more. But again, it's individual to everybody. Acceleration, deceleration, braking, very di very different as well and the dreaded in this sort of weather because I've got this as a winter hack the white lines uh, manhole covers the new bit now we've got sort of long lines of, of bitumen road fill or whatever you get on them you always feel a bit slippy on motorbikes anyway but with this I'm finding I'm having to take corners a lot lot bigger corners um, and you don't want to go into the dirt in the middle of the road or the corners you can't bank the same in dry weather give it some but in this weather in all bikes I just found that I can ride both of these bikes and I feel very very differently riding them so you are going to have a change going from either way something you'll get used to a friend of mine at work has rode one of these for ages he just bought himself a BMW he's going to find it a big difference as well another major difference road users oh my god you know I ride loads of peds I ride around here just racing up and down it's great but I'm going now 10 miles on A roads and bigger roads, 70 mile an hour jobbies. And I find with this bike here, you get the odd occasional nugget that will try and pull over a little bit and try and be an idiot. I find with the scooters and, and mopeds, I find people will pull out in front of you. They can see you, you're not that far away, and they will purposefully pull out in front of you. Remember this is 400 cc, it will do 90 mile an hour if I really push it. And they're not expecting you to just come up behind them. Really annoying. The other day, a woman just stared at me and pulled straight in front of me, and I overtook her. And she's the one who did a wanker sign to me at the window. I'm like, you nearly tried to kill me. You know, it's a 60 mile an hour road, and you pulled out in front of me within feet. And again, handling. <laughs> it wasn't like a big bike you could move over. I felt I had to really <clears throat> get it over and miss her. Um, and I want to scream and shout at her, but there's no sense. I guess they all think these little 50s would do 30 mile an hour. I'm going to come up behind people and I see them move over to the white line to stop me from overtaking them because they think that I'm doing 40, 50 mile an hour maximum and I'm going to annoy them. And of course, I just zoom off doing 70 odd mile an hour. So the biggest differences will be stability, people's attitude towards you. And <sighs> every time I'm riding this, I see other bikes coming the other way and I want to go, woo, it's me, Mark Savage. And I'm sort of like, that's how I feel. Obviously not. Would I recommend Twist and go over the winter. Yes, I would. I bought this for the thrill of 
you know, if you get bored on bikes, this is tetchy all round, you know. This, you get on, you've got the guarantee that it's just twist and go. You haven't got to worry about anything else. When it starts raining heavily and when there's leaves on the road and the other little bits, it can get a little bit scary. The other morning it was hammering down, I do mean hammering, and there was leaves everywhere. And yeah, it did get a bit skiddy for me. The reason why I keep mentioning about the rear brake being on the left hand side is that's your main brake you should use with these scooters. I rode a little 50cc back on one of these big roads a few years ago now. Um, it's the blue uh, little Lexmoto thing. <coughs> and I was hammering along at 30 miles an hour so it seemed. And I come to this bend that I can take on normal bikes at 50, 60 miles an hour. And all of a sudden it got a little bit jumpy as it were on 10 inch wheels. And also I found myself going towards the side of the road. And I'm thinking, this is not good. Now if you feel that, the biggest tip I can give you is not touch your front brake, okay? Shut the throttle off, use your back brake. In that way you still have to steer and control the bike. The worst thing you can do is try and anchor on both brakes. You're gonna go straight. And on a bend or roundabout, you know where you're gonna go. Either on the floor or off the road. It's not clever it's not fun. Even on the big bikes you get the same sort of thing. Don't use the front brake as hard as you can because you're going you're to flip. Same on these. These are more often, if you look at any scooter, scratched on one side. This one fell over in the garden so the young lady says that had it before me but generally that's what's going to happen. So if you feel yourself out of control, shut the throttle off, use your back brake and then bank as sensibly as you can. I don't mean turn the wheel because you're going to come off that way as well. Winter riding is difficult. Riding in all Weathers, to be honest with you, can be fun, can be treacherous, but it's what you're going to get used to in riding. So today I just wanted to say, they're very different. Forget that they're motorbikes, scooters, maxi scooters, mopeds as I keep calling them. It's funny, I don't class as a moped. I class 50ccs, 125s, mopeds, and once it starts to get bigger, I class them as maxi scooters, because that's again what's on the logbook here in England. And I get often people say, they're all scooters, they're not. But I do class the old um, Lamborettas, and that sort of range, uh, the mod scene as it were years ago. They're scooters to me, but a modern 50cc is just a moped. This is a maxi scooter. Comfortable, once you get used to them, very different ride than your proper bike. Uh, that's not degrading these at all, belittling them. I mean, I'm riding this now and I'm quite enjoying it. The lights on it aren't the best. When you've got these LED lights here, it lights the whole entire planet up. Um, these only have one side light, which is this one here, and when you put your maybe on here. As you know in my previous videos, I have put LED upgrades in them. It used to be HID and had LED, and I may look at putting them in here, because in this weather, when the road is wet and it's very dark and there's no moon, it's very dark on this road. Having the screen's great. Now this came with a carbon screen. I'm gonna put it on here, because the wind buffer is on your face, and I've really noticed a big difference. Although on this screen, it's so big, it does wobble a little bit. So, it's helping. The wind's not going in my face, and I found myself dry. That's something you'll notice on a scooter straight away. There's massive benefits for wind protection, rain, and riding. Your legs are tucked in here. I still want my boots and all my gear. Well, actually, I'm dry when I get to where I need to go to. A little bit of splash of rain on the screen and a little bit on my helmet, but that is it. On these bikes, I'm getting splashed in the legs, I'm soaking wet and so on. So there are benefits for the wind and the weather. Do I get mitts with this? Because it hasn't got heated grips. So far, I haven't needed them. It hasn't been really cold yet. This has got heated grips, but I'm gonna look into it. So there you go. Just when you get off a big motorbike and you go on a scooter or vice versa, have a good think, okay? Don't just think you're gonna jump on it and two wheels is all the same. They really are not. So, little chat today about that. Now you know I like my bikes. From GSs to ZX10s to sports bikes to touring bikes to adventure bikes to mopeds. I love my bikes. But I also quite like driving a car. Now I love my Jag. Change of life meant that I paid a huge lump off the mortgage rather than keeping my car. Do I miss my car? Yes I do. But I didn't drive it an awful lot. Now I'm getting to the stage where, do you know what? Winter months, quite fancy something, a bit sporty. Now you all know my wife's got this S1. There's a video on my channel, just under S1 Mark Savage. This 230 odd brake horsepower little rocket ship quad so it's a quattro so it's four wheel drive uh, bucket seats turbo it really does go but it's the wife's car it's funny because 
you get the kids race up behind her and get beside and there's this little granny driving in the car. I was waiting for the slap in the back of the head. <laughs> so I want to get myself something. What's out there on a budget, a couple of three to four thousand pounds? I was looking at minis, but I wanted the Cooper S. Then I see the John Williams Cooper, is it? Um, you know, 100 odd brake, 70 brake horsepower, whatever they are. Quite like them. Um, I sort of looked at the Clubman as well. Um, I like, why do I like the Clubman Cooper S? I don't know why I like it. I just like the back doors and the half door. But they made it right hand side for the British market. Well done, Mini. Um, you thought they made it for the other side. <coughs> quite like that and I don't know why. Um, whatever is out there, I don't want the Clio um, VRX Vauxhall. Has it got dick grit on it? I don't know. Or me having a midlife crisis. Got the Fiesta ST. I still like the old box shape as well as the new shape. A um, few pennies. They can still about the same budget. Honda Civic um, Type R. They're quite nice. 197 brake horsepower. Just want a bit of fun, you know. Um, I don't care if it's been modified as such because I'm an old man and it doesn't really affect me on the insurance. However, what else is there out there for the three to four thousand pound budget that I want to pay? Um, I don't want a Scooby, uh, Mitsubishi Evo, that uh, really has got cockpit all over it for me anyway. Although they are great cars, I just can't have one. Um, what else is there? You know, I'm really battling with something a little bit sporty that will get me around. Um, the Audi S3, I'm only gonna get a really old one for that. I know the engines are bigger, but it's not my cup of tea. I'm trying to get something that is 10 year old around that. Um, and best for my budget, really. Put some comments below, and then I'll carry on with this video. Short interlude. You take care of yourselves on the road, especially in this weather. Let's get the sunshine out next year and get back out on the big bikes. As I said, I'll ride this one when it's nicer, when it's not being hammered down with rain. But this is my little run around now. Bye bye.